Third of all, this watch has a magic trick. What's up people, welcome back to my channel. After a failed attempt of robbing Bell & Ross of their cyber ceramic, I ended up getting this piece instead. If you'd like to know the backstory of that robbery, or my review of the cyber ceramic, do check out the link in the description below. Today we'll be talking about the BR03 most dressy timepiece, the BR03 copper, and why I think it is perhaps the best looking Bell & Ross to own. It is a shame that not many people have been talking about it. The BR03A GBST slash SCA falls into one of the most unique categories of watches. Its design cue sits between both a sporty looking timepiece and a dress watch, whilst maintaining a simplistic look with its iconic aesthetic. Very few watches falls into that category. The iconic circle in a square with four screws motif is vividly shown in this piece. Whilst the masculine looking design may seem a little polarizing, especially for people with smaller wrists like mine. However, you will be surprised how well it wears. More about that later. In its new BR03 case, this watch is measured at 41mm wide and on paper, 9.65mm thick. However, I've measured it to be 9.9mm. In case you are wondering what is the opening radius here, it's approximately 34.5mm. The entire stainless steel case is made up of three layers. From the side, you will see the centerpiece is all brushed, joining with the very short lugs. The top thin layer of the case is also brushed on the side, polished on the bevel and brushed on the top. It is held together with the four perfectly aligned polished screws, which visually gives some contrast with the brush case. The bezel is raised also with a brushed side, polished bevel and brushed top. The bottom thin layer of the case is also brushed on the side, polished on the bevel and brushed on its case back. The four screws holding the case back is also polished. The closed case back here has some information of the watch engraved on it. A key point to note about this engraving is that the information display are pretty visible and readable due to the size of the fonts. This is much appreciated as compared to most watches that has smaller engravings. The pull-out crown has the Bell & Ross logo embossed on it. The Allen key screws on the lugs are also polished giving it some blink on the side. The lug width here is 24mm. This watch comes with two straps. A black synthetic canvas fabric velcro strap with the BR initials engraved on the side of the steel holder. Although I doubt that anyone will be using this, but it is still good to have an extra strap. <laughs> the default strap here is a handmade brown colored calfskin leather with brown stitching, and 7 holes for adjustment. The back is in black with black stitching. The two strap holders are pretty well done as they do not appear to be flimsy. The pin buckle here is all brushed with the BR initials engraved on the right side. I finally understood why they engraved their initials on the right side instead of the center of the buckle. What happens then if you wore it on the wrong wrist? That's not good. Powering this BR03 is a BR Caliber 302 automatic caliber movement, which is a modified Celita SW300-1A. It is a very reliable movement, cost effective and easy to maintain. Underneath the flat sapphire crystal with AR coating is a dial that you will never find on another Bell & Ross. Bell & Ross calls it Guild Copper, but I prefer to call it Guild Salmon. Most watches will simply have a steel rehaul to have the color of the dial reflected on it. Bell & Ross does things differently. The same color scheme is extended all the way to the rehaul. The dial has a vertically brush effect giving it a rather raw industrial looking feel. Save for the wordings and minute tracks that are all printed in black, the hour markers here are all debossed, filled with semi-matte black varnish. The hour and minute hands are chamfered two ways and all the hands are painted in blue and they are all polished finish. There is loom on the hour and minute hands. When it's not illuminating, the loom is salmon as well. Nice. The date is located at the 430 position with black numerals on a salmon backdrop. A glittered salmon backdrop. The opening of the date has a bevel design adding to its aesthetic. To adjust the date, you pull the crown to position 1 to instantaneously change it. At position 2, this hacks the second hand, and you can adjust the time by turning the minute hand. 
Using this method to change the date, the date will start tilting at 11.30pm and completes the turn at 11.56pm. Why do I think this is the most dressy timepiece and perhaps the best looking Baron Ross to own? First of all, I love the salmon, not the fish, Undercooked salmon. but the color. Whilst the watch looks big because of its squarish design, the combination of salmon and the brown leather strap gives it a softer touch, making it easier to wear even with a suit. Second of all, I love the use of blue contrasting with the salmon. It has a certain demure and sophistication vibe at the same time. Just like how Brightling uses blue on their sub hands and moon face on this heritage datora. Very thoughtful, very mindful, very demure. <laughs> if you'd like to check out my review on that watch, the link is in the description below. Third of all, this watch has a magic trick. The divorce numerals and indices have a semi-matte black varnish. However, at certain angles, they mimic the color of the hands and brings out a blue hue. Can you see it? Fourthly, Baron Ross thoughtfully ensured that the date disc, the dial, and the loom on the hands are all of the same color, giving it some form of consistency. Last but not least, at the time this video was made, this watch is priced as seen below. In comparison with the other Baron Ross, I think there is a lot of value on this piece at this price point. The color stands out, not in a loud way, but in an elegant manner. You can either dress up or dress down with this piece. It's basically a Baron Ross that is very thoughtful, very mindful, and very demure. Overall, this is a gorgeous looking watch. Anyway, what do you think of this piece? Too dressy? Is it outside the definition of a Baron Ross? Do let us know of what you think in the comments below. If you have a budget of around $1,000 and are looking for the best summon dial watch at that price, do check out my suggested video at the left screen here and I'll catch you in my next video. Take care now, bye bye now.